Join us to explore Liberia's hidden history, Western, Central, and Eastern regions with Dr. Carl Patrick Burroughs. Welcome to our Liberia virtual tour launch event in celebration of Black History Month. Today's event is brought to you by ACE Liberia Africa Community Exchange and the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Delta Iota Zeta Chapter. We have the honor and privilege to interview our special guest, Dr. Carl Patrick Burroughs. Dr. Burroughs is a retired humanities professor and university administrator. He is one of Liberia's leading historians, and his recent books include Between the Cola Forest and the Salty Sea, A History of the Liberian People Before 1800. From 1995 to 1998, he was the Carter G. Woodson Distinguished Professor at Marshall University. His research has received awards from the International Communication Association and the Association for Education and Journalism and Mass Communications. He holds a Bachelor of Arts cum laude degree from Howard University, a Master of Arts from Syracuse University, and PhD from Temple University. This year marks part of the Year of the Diaspora celebration for Liberia. We hope to celebrate this momentous occasion by offering a glimpse into some of the lesser known narratives that make up Liberia's rich history. Today's event serves as a launch for a more in-depth virtual tour that we hope you join us for on July 30th, 2022. During these pandemic times, it is important to stay connected, even if you can't physically be in Liberia. We hope this will entice you to explore, visit, and learn more about Black history through the lens of Liberia. To register and for more information, please visit and follow us on our social media platforms for updates. My name is Olu Williams and I was born in Liberia. My parents were born in Liberia. I am part of the Liberian story. I am Liberian. We are Liberian. My name is Sarah Buchanan and I was born in Liberia. My parents were born in Liberia and I am part of the Liberian story. I am Liberian. We are Liberians.
Dr. Burroughs, we're so glad that you could join us for this event. Let's take a moment to talk about some of the regions you're going to walk us through and the highlights that you're going to share about Liberia during this virtual tour. What's some of the history that people are already aware of? And then tell us a little bit about some of the untold stories. Yes, so greetings from Monrovia. Uh, and I'm Carl Patrick Burroughs. I'm here to share with you briefly uh, the story of uh, the Liberia story, the story of how Liberia actually began. And to understand the story, we need to understand our connections to the region, to the broader West Africa region. Uh, there are three language families that meet in the space known as Liberia. One group is called the Atlantic language group, and it extends from Senegal all the way down, and that language is called the Atlantic language. When the Europeans arrived in around 1450, the first group came from Portugal and they, the ship they were on turned around near the Junk River in Marshall, what is now Marshall. Uh, so the mouth of the Junk River is significant historically because of that. And then they turned around and went back. Uh, the arrival of the Portuguese on the West Coast really resulted in turning West Africa upside down. Trade had been directed north to the empires and the empires were supplying goods from the Mediterranean and Arabia. With the arrival of the Portuguese, people were getting goods from this, the coast. And so you know, the attention shifted, trading shifted. Um, with the arrival of Europeans, they were looking for gold uh, and they were also looking for Malagueta spice. Malagueta spice at that time was only found in Liberia between River Cess and Kipalmas. So that part of Liberia is very important you know, for the Malagueta trade ships were loaded with tons of Malagueta and taken to Europe. Uh, people called it the spice of paradise at the time. Thank you again for being with us on our virtual tour of Liberia, the original land of return on the continent of Africa. In some of your previous work, you've spoken about the early migratory patterns of the inhabitants of what we now know as Liberia. Those early inhabitants were in the Western region so could you highlight for us some of the key social cultural elements of what life was like for those earliest settlers to the Western region of Liberia? At the Northern boundary, we have some remnants, you know, artifacts uh, related to their settlement. And that would have been uh, about 2000 years ago, roughly. That happened in the western region of Liberia. We have evidence from archaeology of people making sea salt 
uh, in the western part of Liberia. And from all indications, they were linked to the day uh, ethnic group. Now, the trade in salt uh, from the day attracted people from Mali who had been buying this salt and they were seeking the source of that salt. And so they traveled south until they came to the area of Cape Mount. And they were the ancestors of the group we call the Vi in Liberia today. And so the Vi ended up settling in the area of Cape Mount where the day were, and they had been making sea salt. Linked to that trade in salt is a town in Liberia called Bopolu. And Bopolu, we have evidence, is one of the oldest continuously occupied settlements in all of West Africa. And we know this because the they created Bopolu as a place where they could meet traders from the north. And we know that the ancestors of the Vai came around 1200 AD. So that particular community, which is still there, uh, has been in continuous existence for that long. Of course, Kipman is also in the western part of Liberia. And there are places there linked to the spoiling of sea water to make sea salt. And so hopefully on this tour, we can visit some of those locations in the West. for us what life was like for the earliest inhabitants to the eastern region of Liberia. The Liberia story picks up next in the eastern part of the country. Uh, and it involves a second language family that entered this space. That language group is called the Kru language. But that word doesn't mean that it is uh, the same as the Kru ethnic group. Linguists just name it that because the crew ethnic group is well known. But the crew language group includes crew, of course, but Kra, you know, Basa, many languages in Liberia that are related. And according to the oral traditions of those families, they came into Liberia from the north uh, east. According to the historical linguistic evidence, they're related to people who are in Burkina Faso. So there are who speaking groups in Burkina Faso. There are some in Cote d'Ivoire. So the groups actually seem to have migrated from that direction until they came to Liberia. And they entered what is Liberia, Liberia through uh, the Jida Mountain in Grand Jida. And we say that, I can say that affirmatively because according to the oral traditions of many, many crew speaking groups, they say they all live in the Jida area originally. And from there they dispersed. So they entered Liberian territory not long after those groups that came to the West. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Fatima Tamnasli. I was born in Morovia, Liberia. My parents were born in Liberia in Sierra Leone. I am a part of the Liberian story. I am Liberian. We are Liberians. From Grand Jida, you then have a dispersal of crew-speaking people uh, 
going westward around the, the, the margin of Liberia, the northern border of Liberia. And what happened is as people were going, people usually migrated along you know, waterways. You need water to survive migrations. And so um, they followed the rivers. And the group in Liberia known as the Day seemed to have hit the coast first. And they followed the St. Paul River down to the coast. And they arrive and they are linked to boiling seawater to make salt. And they were selling sea salt up north. My name is Jefferson Kura. I was born in Liberia. My parents were born in Liberia. I am part of the Liberian story. I am Liberian. We are Liberians. If we go back to the Eastern region uh, to continue that story, other crew speaking people then migrated southward, some along the Kavala River until they hit, they hit the area of uh, Kitamas. They, they were the ancestors of the Gribble. Now, ethnic groups didn't have just one you know, ancestry, you know, people came from different places and met and combined, but um, the main stream of the Gribble came down the Kavala. The crew seemed to have come down the Cestus River, the Basa came down the St. John River until they hit the coast. So as we tell this story, we want to visit some sites that are important to the various groups, you know, involved. Um, in the eastern part of Liberia, the southeast, they developed a very rich maritime culture, uh, people making canoes out of huge uh, trees. And these canoes would go out to sea, you know, for fishing and, and so forth. And uh, we want to explore a little bit of that culture in the eastern side. Could you also highlight for us what life was like for the earliest inhabitants to the central region of Liberia? So in the central part of Liberia, we have that third stream, that language stream, and that is the Mande language. The Mande includes Malenke, or in Liberia we say Mandingo, uh, Pele, Noma, uh, there's Amano and Da. So these are some of the largest you know, language groups in, in Liberia, the Pele being the largest. And so the, the language developed along the Niger River. Uh, it was linked to some trading empires like Mali and Ghana. And as the population exploded, people began migrating south. And as they migrated south, some entered the forest area of Liberia. Hello, my name is Monigo Segbe Hali, and I was born in Kakata, Liberia. My parents were born, my mother in Kakata, Liberia also, and my father in Lofa County. And I am part of the Liberian story. I am a Liberian. We are Liberians. So that's just uh, some of the key aspects of early Liberian history. And uh, just as the Atlantic Ocean was important in the development of sea salt, and that attracted the attention of people from the Sahelian empires to come, uh, the Atlantic also uh, was involved with the transatlantic slave trade and people were removed from here 
and taken to the new world. Uh, it's important to note that two of the earliest groups to enter Liberia, the Gola and the Gisi, are linked to two well-known groups in America where they are called the Gola and the Gichi. They are known as rice eaters and they were rice producers. And the Gisi are also known as prolific rice producers. So the connection continued. We know that people from the Liberia area were also taken to Suriname in Guyana in Jamaica. Um, and so there's that aspect of the history that extends across you know, the Atlantic as well. And then in the early 1800s, repatriates come. And by repatriates, I mean literally what the word says, and that is people who return to the land of their ancestors, of their fathers, liberally. And so the repatriates arrived. Some went to Freetown initially. That attracted the attention of others who ended up coming to Liberia. And uh, they were given permission to settle on land originally held by the day. The very first group to settle in the area of Monrovia, just as the day had given permission to the divide to settle among them. So the repatriates came and settled. And originally, those who came from America settled in Monrovia. So that's one reason why Monrovia is rich with a number of historical uh, sites, buildings, locations that are still standing and uh, would be worth, you know, if you came to Liberia on a virtual tour, it would be worth exploring some of those sites. My name is Steve Spear Steele. I was born in Monrovia, Liberia. My parents were born in the Maryland country, and I'm part of the Liberian story. Hello, my name is Manya Chroma, and I was born in Monrovia, Liberia. And my parents were both born in Liberia. My mother's side of the family has a little bit of Va, Gola, Pela mix. Uh, my father's family migrated from Guinea years ago, and so did a portion of my mother's family migrated in like the 1800s to Liberia. I am part of the Liberian story and proud of it. I am Liberian. We are Liberians. Thank you for joining our Liberia virtual tour launch event in celebration of Black History Month. And thank you, Dr. Burroughs, for providing us with a glimpse into Liberia's rich history. Once again, today's event is brought to you by ACE Liberia, Africa Community Exchange, and the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Delta Iota Zeta Chapter. We hope to see you at our Liberia virtual tour in July. To register and for more information, please visit and follow us on our social media platforms for updates. We also invite you to check out other featured books by Dr. Burroughs at knowyourself.press.